a person really and desperately at work is looking for a promotion desperately I want a promotion I want to get promoted they are not promoted in fact they are fired fired for some reason or retrenched or as they say the person now has is redundant completely we don't want you anymore and you start crying you're shocked you have a few ways of dealing with the news you wanted an increment you wanted a promotion you needed the money you had to look after your family and so on you were planning to buy a car or a house you were planning perhaps to get married or to assist a family member in getting married and what happened not only did you not get the promotion but your boss called you and told you you know what you have one month of notice and after that we don't need you anymore and you are just like what one way is to become depressed, to become sad, to go back home, to sleep and never wanting to get up again. It's one way of dealing with it. And you are so sad, you cry every day, morning, evening and night. And you don't want to talk to anyone, you don't feel like eating and you get sick. Is that a believer? Is that what Allah taught you? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one, He's the planner. You tried and Allah is the one who over rules your trials and your plans. He knows what's better. Anta turid, wallahu yurid, wallahu yaf'alu ma yurid. You want, Allah wants. And Allah is the one who does what He wants. Subhanallah. So now you're upset. And what happens? As a result, everything came to a standstill. Your life is at a standstill. You're, you're, if you're married, your marriage is about to break because you can no longer afford to look after your family members. You begin to feel inferior because perhaps your wife might be earning more than you. You begin to become so sick that you suffer insomnia. You cannot sleep at night and so on. One way of dealing with it. Or if you're a true believer, you say Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. And you look at the verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Indeed, we will test every one of you with various tests. We have to test you. One of them is fear. Obviously, this is part of fear. You've just been fired. You don't know what's going to happen. Fear is not just when you're fearing an enemy. That is part of it. But this is also a part of it. I'm fearing. I'm scared. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Subhanallah. So it's important for me to understand Allah's plan is he's going to test me. I cannot enter an examination room expecting no tests. I'm just sitting there with my pen and my paper and I'm thinking to myself, I don't want to, to be tested here. Let me just cry. That's it. My tears will definitely drop onto that paper and change its shape perhaps. And when the examiner sees it, he will give me a hundred percent because he will be sympathetic to the fact that I just cried. That's not what it's all about. You see the most difficult question. What did your teacher teach you? Attempt it, try your best. That's all. We all know, I'm sure we're all adults here. Even those who are children from amongst us, you would know when you have an examination twice a year, thrice a year, and you have to write to answer the questions. You are taught definitely that look, attempt it, try it, write whatever you feel is correct. Don't leave it blank. You might just get it right. Don't just sit back and become depressed. No, try. Do your best. Leave the rest inshallah in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The same applies in life. So Allah says, we will test you with fear and with hunger. And loss of wealth. Loss of life. These are the tests we will test you with. You will lose money. You're a big businessman and one day you have a loss. How much is it? A million ringgit or a million dollars or 10,000 depending on your level. You have a huge loss. You must say Alhamdulillah. I thank Allah. There are others who are going through much more than I am. That's one of the best ways of going through difficulty is to look at those who are struggling in a bigger way. The Prophet says very clearly, look at those who are lower than you. You don't have shoes. Look at those who don't even have feet. Look at those who don't have legs. They cannot walk. Subhanallah. So the Prophet instructs us to look at those who have less than us. 
Today we are seated here, mashallah, beautiful, peaceful, lovely. We are breathing fresh air. We are sitting in a lovely place, air conditioned. Take a look at those who don't even have a roof on their heads. Take a look at those who are homeless. They don't know where the next meal is going to come from. Wallahi, wallahi. And they are not in their thousands. They are in their millions. You are one of the top among the brackets that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept human beings in. Trust me, if you know where you're going to eat next, according to your plan, you need to thank Allah. Because there are millions out there who don't even know where they're going to sleep tonight. Across the globe, there are people so desperate that they have to jump onto a plank, hoping that they will get onto the shores of another place that might be safer than the one they are in. And they die as a result. They end up on your shores or they end up on the shores of some of the European countries or some other countries. And that's only a small fraction of them who make it to the end of the journey. The rest of them, they died as a result of taking the risk because they were struggling, suffering. Where are we? So one of the cornerstones to be able to worship Allah with gratitude and thankfulness is to look at those who have less than you and continue looking at them. And always thank Allah, Alhamdulillah. Oh Allah, I'm going through a problem. I have, for example, a person who has a sickness. May Allah grant all of us cure. Oh Allah, I have this sickness. I have a skin problem. I have this problem. I have cancer. May Allah grant all those who have cancer cure. My knees are aching. Your knees are aching, but you have access to medication. You have access to so many other things. There are people whose knees are broken. They have no access to anything. They are still crawling. They are still thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to say, Oh Allah, at least we can put our head down for you. With us, we have so much. But what, what happens to salah? What happens to our dress code? What happens to quitting sin? What happens to turning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So Allah says, we will test you with loss of wealth. Loss of wealth, you will have to lose. It is impossible for anyone in any business to gain only without suffering some form of loss. It's a plan of Allah. You have to. Some people, they might be billionaires and they might suffer a few million, but it was still a loss. Percentage wise, it was small. Perhaps it might not have gone down to bankruptcy, but it went down. It fluctuated. It's heavy on the heart. But understand, my brother, my sister, you are going to leave everything behind and go back to Allah without even your body. Did you know that? Without this body you have right now that you are seated with, you're going to go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When He resurrects you, He will resurrect you with another body. Subhanallah. That's Allah. So don't worry. Things have to come to an end. All your difficulties have to come to an end. You are suffering in your marriage. Take a look at those who are looking to get married. They don't even know where to begin. And they're already progressing and advancing in age. They're losing hope, but they're still thanking Allah. Oh Allah, I might not have been married. I'm already 60 years old. But Ya Allah, I thank you for giving me the opportunity to worship you while I was in this world only for six decades. Subhanallah. Notice how I said only for six decades. It's actually so short. Ask those who are older from amongst us, how was your life spent? They will talk to you about the 80s, the 90s, 2000, 2010, and it will seem like a few paragraphs. They have summarized their lives in a short span. It's over. Short. They will tell you, no, I know the highlights of my life. And it flicked through like this. They will remember the good days. They might remember a few of the bad days, but more than anything, they know currently where they stand. A person who suffered a long time back and today they are in ease will definitely thank Allah for where they are today if they are thankful. My beloved brothers and sisters, sometimes you feel like you are in the dead end. There is no other way to escape from your all the difficulties and hurdles and struggles in your life. But remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't burden someone beyond their capability. There's always light towards the end of the tunnel. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help you. Allah will support you. Allah will bring you out from the problems that you are going through. Allah says, Inna ma'al usri yusra. Verily, with hardship comes ease. So if you are going through hardship right now, Sooner than later, 
your hardship will be over and you will see light you will see success in your life but for that you need to take action you need to do whatever possible in your capability to eradicate the problems that you are going through do that work hard and pray your five daily salah turn towards allah do istighfar ask allah for forgiveness ask allah to help you and do tawakkul on allah rely on allah but consistently continuously work hard and allah will definitely give you the prophets they went through a lot of struggles but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after that gave them peace serenity harmony the pious predecessors and still now many people around you they are going through struggles and problems and even if you see in your life you'll see that many people in the past they were going through a lot of hardships but over time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them Allah made them happy Allah made them successful Allah gave them wealth so don't be distressed and don't be sad Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with you sometimes Allah gives you hardship so that you can come closer to him so that you beg to him you cry to him you repent to him and you strengthen your relationship with him help us build an islamic studio at www.islamicstudio.org link in the description